In the last video, we were discussing the law of exponential growth, and it unfortunately got cut off in the end. So let's we'll start over here with half-life. The basic idea of half-life is that when you've got a radioactive substance, as it emits particles, as it emits radiation, it's actually becoming less and less radioactive. It's actually using up the radioactive material as it emits those particles. So what the half-life is, it's the amount of time it takes until there's only half as much radioactive material as what you started with. If you start with 100 grams, after one half-life, there'll be 50 grams left. After another half-life, there'll be half again, so half of 50, 25 grams left, and so on. This principle, that it's a very fixed constant until you've got half the amount remaining, is how they do carbon dating. So the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,730 years. You find a fossil, and it's measured, based on what they know of the amount of carbon-14 in the atmosphere, that that thing has 3% of what it started with. So how old is that fossil? Just like in the other problem, we're going to go ahead and we need to figure out what the K is in the P equals P0 e to the KT. But the problem is it doesn't seem like there's any numbers here for what the populations are. It doesn't actually mention how much carbon-14 we have. But that's okay, because we can just go ahead and use it in terms of percentages. The original amount it started with is 100%. So I'll just put in 100 for the population. Then, because of the whole idea of half-life, I know that when the time passed is 5730, 5730 years, there's half of it remaining. So 50% is what remains. We can just do those populations in terms of percentages, and then we can work it out as normal. So just like in the last problem, we've got to go ahead and figure out what K is. I can divide by 100, and 50 over 100 would give me 1 half is equal to e to the k times 5,730. I can then take the natural log of both sides. And once again, when you take the ln of e to a power, it cancels out their inverse functions, and so you're just left with the power. So, my k is the ln of 1 half over 5,730. Now, there's two things about this. First thing that you want to notice, when you plug this into the calculator, you get a negative number. And to some extent, that makes sense. That should make sense because remember the K is kind of a measure of how fast it's growing. And here we've got something that's dying out. We're getting less and less material there instead of more and more. So we have negative growth. The other thing you've got to watch out for is that if you're not careful, I've seen way too many people just read the number off the calculator and they get something like 1.209 six eight and they try to do the problem using that number the problem is if you actually look carefully at the end it depends on what your calculator is but it'll probably say something like e negative four what that e negative four is is it's saying that the decimal point should be shifted four places to the left this is actually negative 0 0.00012 So be careful as you're writing it down and putting it in. Make sure you keep track of 
the fact that we've got that thing there. We've got that shift in where the decimal point is. Okay, now that I've got that K, now we can go about doing the problem. And it's actually very similar to what we just did here. The fossil we found has 3% of its original, and we're trying to find how old the fossil is. So again, using the P equals P naught e to the KT, the population of my fossil is, actually wait, I'm not changing to that, so it's 30%, it's 3% equals 100 times E to the K times T. Now, one of the things here, this is just kind of a handwriting trick, a way of saving yourself a little bit of work. This is what K is. It's a lot easier for me to write a K than to write that number. So as long as you remember that you know what that K is, that that K is a constant that you've already found, I'm just going to write K along the way, and then at the end I'll stick in that K. So I'll divide both sides by 100. That's the point zero 0.03 that I was starting to write down, is E to the K times T. I can take the natural log of both sides. So the natural log of 0 0.03. Natural log cancels out the E. I've got K times T. So my T is about the natural log of 0 0.03 over K. Now I'll go ahead and put that in. 0 0.0001209968. And with all that, I get about 28,000 987 years, and there's more decimals. Once again, this kind of carbon dating thing is not accurate down to the nearest year. Honestly, if I were saying this to someone, they were asking me to do this computation, I'd probably even go as far as say about 30,000 years old. There's lots of variables in this that make it not completely accurate, but it is a way of figuring out how old these artifacts are. It's a way that they use to figure out approximately what era something comes from.